all good things sadly must come an end. And before going into the details, thank you from the bottom of my heart for everyone for being here, for everyone contributing remotely. Uh, it's just been great to be back here after two years staring into a camera and now seeing all faces again. Thank you. So now, uh, PC hat on. Uh, I would like to say goodbye on behalf of the whole program committee. Uh, and therefore, first of all, thank you and a very big round of applause to all presenters and submitters who made this conference possible. Obviously as well, thanks to all heralds who moderated everything, relayed our questions, and also to all heralds who relayed questions from the internet. Thank you very much. I think before my next presentation, I will add a warning attention. It's going to be sport now, so uh, you can get used to clapping. Um, <laughs> if you want to help with the heralds in the future, please feel free to reach out to Sebastian or me. Um, then another big round of applause uh, to our video team who can't hear you because this wall is soundproof, so be very loud for them. <laughs> and somehow they, start, uh, they started to design their own logos, uh, which I don't know how to feel about yet, but yeah. Uh, day one recordings are already on YouTube and the rest will follow soon, so feel free to uh, re-watch talks you liked or watch the talks you missed. Um, so for the video setup, what changed? Uh, obviously we moved from our virtual office in Berlin to Hamburg, who would have thought? Um, we now have seven people dedicated to running the video stream both on-site and remote, um, which is quite the increase from the operations we had uh, when running the virtual DNOC. There we were also roughly seven people, but for running the whole conference. We also need some more people because the setup got more complex. I have two new moving friends in the uh, fourth row, which are PTZ cameras, which can move around and follow me as I walk over here uh, and back. And the issue with that is uh, that this requires dedicated staff and someone uh, who I didn't brief uh, had to follow me right now. Uh, <laughs> so thank you for following me. I'm getting a thumbs up. Oh no, it's not a thumbs up. <laughs> And also, aside from the once forgotten cable, which had to be acquired by, at MediaMarkt, uh, there were no major hiccups, so that's also nice. For the impressions, if you want to see in that booth over there, um, we have on the left, obviously, the PTZ camera operator. You can see their uh, little joystick there, and then as well as the whole, uh, all inputs, mixing them into the master slides and so on. Uh, so yeah, that's what it looks up there, and I didn't clean up. This is the authentic view from up there. <laughs> I also hit the cables. <laughs> then for the cameras, this one, or the image of this camera doing the uh, total view of the stage uh, you've seen before. Um, this is the camera we used to run the virtual DNOC. And then we rented two additional PTZ cameras, my lovely friends uh, who I'm not gonna make follow me again. Um, yeah, so again, thank you to them for providing us with great video live streams, great recordings. Um, yeah, I guess it's worth another round of applause. With that also, thank you to the program committee, Florian, Kai, Richie, Sebastian, Stefan, Theo, Tim and Wolfgang for selecting all the talks, for taking the time to rate all of them. Uh, actually, after, uh, oh yeah, well, give them a round of applause first. <laughs> Obviously, we can only rate based on, uh, on our gut intentions, so if you feel we did a very good job with something or have another opinion about the presentation, please rate the talks, let us know what you think so we can find a better selection for you next year or an even better solution for uh, schedule for you next year. And please also rate the conference, but I guess Patrick will have that slide as well, so we'll leave the details to him. Um, COVID testing um, operated by CTSB. Um, as you may have noticed, we do believe that COVID testing is essential to run such a conference and to allow everyone here to feel safe. Obviously, the number I'm going to show you now is a bit correlation uh, and, and cannot be taken as exact because obviously people will all later. But by the time we announced that we would do COVID testing, 
uh, which was August 24th, uh, we had roughly below 200 registrations. Once we announced, uh, registration spiked and we had 150 people more sign up. Uh, so I would quickly like a show of hands, who here is because we did testing? That's quite a few, so I'm happy that, that uh, you decided to join us and hope you felt safe. Um, but anyway, these, these numbers contradict very much the trends we had from registrations for previous events. Obviously, data privacy uh, with medical data is a very high priority. And so if someone would have tested positive, we wouldn't have known. We only get informed about the negative tests, and therefore we can't sadly provide you exact numbers about the amount of positive tests. We can tell you there were some, um, but I don't have the number myself. Also speaking about privacy and delivering results about tests, uh, email, as some of you may have experienced, especially when running gray listing, which basically delays an email by 30 minutes, is not the most ideal way to uh, inform someone about timely results. So if you have any better approaches for, for the future, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, just throwing them on a website didn't feel like the, the best thing to do regarding data privacy. So if you have a great idea, feel free to reach out. Um, also, when you are ordering tickets for DNOC, in this case, but also for other things like workshop registrations and so on, please, if your back office is booking your tickets, make sure to inform them to actually set the attendee mail correctly to you directly so we can reach you and not frontdesk at company.com. So yeah, thank you all for your patience and the very great participation in the, uh, in the COVID testing, obviously also in the drill we had to do yesterday. Um, with that, I'd like to give you some impressions about the way of a COVID test. So you've all had our, your warning welcome with that nice cotton swab. And eventually, and this is my result, and you will see my uh, medical data uh, in the future just uh, for, the, uh, for sake of privacy. So once the, the result is collected, it is uh, labeled and barcoded and then sent to our lab. It's not in the tent. Um, the lab then scans the, uh, the vial and it is uh, correctly input with all, the, uh, with all your uh, attendee data or well, the, the required attendee data to link it back to you uh, into the testing system. Then this uh, lateral flow analysis strip with all these nice printed circuits is inserted into the testing machine. It requires uh, roughly three minutes to heat up uh, to be at the optimal temperature for, for the best results. Then once it has had its time to heat up, you are asked to apply your sample and the machine will start testing. The test takes, or the first test takes about five minutes. It's still a lateral flow test like you would have with those uh, one or two red stripes, hopefully one, uh, but obviously it's way more detailed when done electronically and can actually be quantified and not only qualified. Um, so once your test has been processed and once it is deemed negative, then only do we at DNOC get the information uh, about your test result, which is the uh, Safety Sunday or Safety Monday product on the bottom. Also indicated by that green check mark is if your test result has been verified and you've been given a wristlet, so you can't reuse these test results. So once that product is added, this is actually the first time we as DNOC know about it and we can send you that test mail. Also, you may have wondered why we have uh, had the, uh, the staff from the venue at the very uh, front just checking for the subject of the email. This is obviously also because we wouldn't want to give uh, any attendee data to someone outside of DNOC. So you got in there, they checked the subject, relayed you to our check-in desk, we verified everything, gave you a wristlet, and then you were good to go. In the back end, they are basically like, or the medical people are basically like we network engineers are. They love dashboards, they love Grafana. So here you can see uh, some, some data of this. This is today's tests. Um, most of the tests roughly took between 10 uh, to, to 12 minutes and just some minor uh, outliers with 18 minutes and so on. Um, also, you can see at the very bottom, there is one positive test from today. Um, and this is because the testing method in the RAPID program has a uh, a very low but uh, chance for false positives. If such a false positive would occur, 
we can resend that test with the same sample you provided, have it completely rescanned and uh, look at the data in full detail and verify if this was actually a false positive or not. In this case, it was the one and only false positive we had. Uh, this rescanning took uh, roughly 20 minutes, but we did it for everyone who tested positive so they could actually really know if they are positive and also quantifiably measure how uh, how many, what their uh, amount of viruses in, in their uh, sample was. So people can actually know how far in their infection they are and we've provided that information to the people who were infected. Uh, so yeah, uh, just just uh, one last uh, screenshot um, from from my sample this morning and this afternoon I took for the uh, free tests, uh, just for you to see. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Patrick. Thank you again. And Patrick, I guess the last words are yours. Thank you. <laughs> so. From the bottom of the heart of all of the organization that was working here, I would like to say thank you to all of you. Like Moritz, I've been staring at black cameras and dark, uh, dark backgrounds for three years now. Uh, this is way more entertaining and way more fun. Uh, to see you, to talk to all of you, this was good. Um, I hope we can continue doing this again. So a couple of facts, as I said, nothing has changed. We were sold out on day one, we're still sold out. We're about 350 people on site. Uh, we had more than 250 remote. Uh, I'm hoping I'm not contradicting your data here, but last I checked, we had about 800 and a bit more COVID tests run over the whole time. And the duplications counted to that as well. Your people doing something really badly wrong with the internet we provide you. We have 100 gig of internet up and down. Just to clarify, we will have that again next time. You're supposed to use it. And it's gigabyte, it's not megabyte. Bit. <laughs> bit, sorry, but bit. You can see the distance I have. But, so, next time we'll try that again. We'll provide the same quality, we'll provide the same service. Looking at Wi-Fi, we had about 755 clients on 12 access points. Uh, and just to look at it, the distribution uh, is very interesting. If you look at the left side, the devices that were actually locked in, uh, you can see a good spread around everything that we're seeing in the industry. Uh, if you look on the right side, I think the positive one is we're above 50% for IPv6. That seems to be a good thing. More importantly, coffee, obviously. Uh, and we've all been through that for the last years. Uh, we had 945 coffees given out, and that's a perspective, uh, perspective question. When I asked the barista, he was very happy, and he, his statement was, that is way above average. My statement was, that's less than three coffees per person. I've had that today. What went wrong there? <laughs> So industry and industry, I think there is a difference in that. And above 95 liters of milk, which apparently people put in their coffee for several reasons. Um, attendee shirts. Um, here we go. So for those who haven't seen that yet, fitted shirts have arrived. Uh, they are waiting for you for pickup downstairs. Unfortunately, um, express delivery at 9 a.m. in the morning doesn't mean it actually is there at 9 a.m. in the morning if you send it with the wrong service. Um, so we're, I think we're four or five days behind that 9 a.m. We can certainly conclude there is no hope anymore for today. Uh, we will ship them to you. I'm looking forward to that exercise again. We've done it for the last years. I'm very happy we get to do that again. <laughs> As a reminder, the general meeting for the DNOC Foundation is tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. We will send out, and here I learned my lesson from the opening, we will send out links and invitations later on. And we will send an email to the mailing list and the members list so that you know they've been sent out so that you can ask if you haven't gotten it. Emojis. 
We haven't solved that actually for the in-person event. Um, I, I saw that when I looked at the slide, and I was like, oh, we need to do that at the in-person event as well. So there is an action for next year. But on the remote side, the emojis are still heavily used. As you can see, the main stage was well occupied and nicely done and used for this exercise as well. Um, and then again, obviously, as we already stated at the welcoming, sponsors are what is making this happen. You saw my introduction at the beginning, hopefully otherwise check the numbers, but the entrance fee that we're asking for is really not covering the cost that DNOC has for providing all of this. So we're very happy and very thankful to all of our sponsors, especially to Interlink as our diamond sponsor. Give it a hand, clap of hands, please. And as Morris said, it's sport, so we'll do that a bit. Um, our social sponsor, IPHH, our lunch sponsor, Flex Optics, our safety sponsor, LWLcom, our lanyard sponsors, Thomas Crenn, and our coffee sponsor, Arista. <laughs> our platinum sponsors, D Kicks, B Kicks, and NLAX. Our gold. Please. Our gold sponsors, Alita, Open Gear, Core Backbone, and Flex Optics. And last but not least, our silver sponsors, who really support the community and want to give to that uh, without having big representation be besides the logo. So that's well appreciated as well. Data Center One, Babiel, Entity, Packet Fabric, Wapcom, Norris Networks, DriveNet, and Santaro. And also, even though you haven't used it, <laughs> our connectivity sponsors, Deutsche Telekom and Adix for the Wi-Fi. <laughs> and last but not least, really would like to thank the Bocarius Law School team and especially the event team. They've been awesome for the last years and they've been also awesome during the pandemic where we could have really good opportunities to cancel last minute and they were with us for the last four years and that's a huge plus for the whole team, please. We had that conversation earlier today. We won't be back, unfortunately, next year because they weren't, Hamburg wasn't on the list, but I'm sure we will be back with a conference or something else. So looking forward to that. Thanks to the whole Orga team who made this happen. Um, Florian Hippler, Kai Rechtin, Moritz Frenzel, Sebastian Becker, Stefan Funke, Theo Voss, Tim Klefers, Fiona Weber, Anita Meyer. Thanks also to the DNOC board who has been working significantly in the background and on that I specifically want to say thank you to Arnold who has to deal with all of the financial trouble that we're causing all over the place and then has to make it look actually right and correct for the whole conference. Big thank you to Arnold for that. Thank you to all of the angels. This was the first time that we ran an angel system at this conference, and I think it was really, really helpful to all of us. It gave the opportunity to people to actually be involved. I'm really looking forward to having that again next year, and I'm hoping everyone will participate and we will see even more angels. So give it up for our angels. Thank you again to the DNOC video team. Uh, they do an awesome job. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Thanks again to our speakers. Moritz already did that, but you can clap again. 
And last but not least, thanks to all of you. We're doing this for you. We're doing this for you having an awesome experience, for you networking, for you meeting new people, for you being part of the community. So we hope you enjoyed that. I'm not done, not, no getting up here. Um, so quick outlook for next year. Um, 2023 is gonna have meetups again. I'm stubborn on that. We'll do that, we'll get there. 2023 is gonna be, have the orga shop. Uh, workshop. 2023 is going to have the DNOC 15. I'm certain of that. 2023 is going to finally have the community block. It's absolutely going to have a first start of not the German internet report or whatever we call it at that point. And it's going to have more investment and more outreach on the diversity and research side. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then the reason why you're all still sitting here and have to listen to me. <laughs> I, I kind of get that. Um, the DNARC 15 City 2023. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we have a three-phase process. At the first round, people can um, offer new cities and volunteer cities that we should look into. Uh, then we have a selection phase where the members vote on the best five cities. And then out of the best five cities, we vote for the city that we're gonna go to next year. What you can see is that we had Munich on second, Frankfurt on third, Cologne on fourth, and Dusseldorf on five, which at the end brings us to Berlin for next year. And with that, um, we're going to announce a date, location, and all of that rather soon. Uh, you will see it on the website. You will see it on the email list. Uh, looking forward to see you all in Berlin next year. Thank you very much for attending. Get home safely. Uh, see you in 2023. Stay safe. Thank you.